Hi everyone, uh, I'm Riley Plant. I'm a senior at Middlebury College right now, um, Sugar Bowl Academy graduate of 2013. Um, I'm here to talk today a little bit about the different ways that college racing um, compares to high school racing and fist racing like most of us do at ski academies um, or during our PG years before we enter college. Um, specifically, I'm going to talk about the EISA, which stands for the Eastern Intercollegiate Ski Association, as compared to the RMISA, the Rocky Mountain Intercollegiate Ski Association. Um, because I'm at Middlebury, which is in Vermont, I'm more familiar with that. Um, so one interesting distinction is that all college racing falls under the FIS umbrella. However, not all FIS races fall under the college racing umbrella. Um, basically how it works is there are six EISA, what we call carnivals, um, which is basically just what we refer to these short weekend race, uh, race series as, um, so there's six of them throughout the year starting usually in about mid January and they run through till sort of the end of February. Um, each carnival has a slalom and a GS race, um, and the schools that get to host them usually rotate, um, with the only consistencies being that Middlebury, Dartmouth, and the University of Vermont get to host one every year. Um, so the other three carnivals usually rotate between about six other schools or so. Um, at each carnival, there are 15 schools or so competing. Um, each of those schools gets to start six guys and six girls, um, with the top three finishers from each team um, being scored and those three scores combining for the team's score. At the end of the weekend, the team with the most points wins. So, for example, if Middlebury starts six guys and one of them gets first, the second one gets seventh, and the third one gets 12th place, then the guy who gets first earns the most points, the guy who gets seventh gets the second most points, and the guy who got 12th gets the third most points. Any Middlebury competitors that finish after that, um, their scores are irrelevant for the team score. So those top three are added up. Whatever the total is, um, then becomes Middlebury's score for the men's GS. That same process happens with the men's slalom, the women's GS, um, and the women's slalom as well. So at the end of the weekend, all four of those are added up for the carnival score, um, and that's how, how the awards are done. Um, there's also still an individual aspect that plays into it. So you get awarded not only fist points in these races, but also EISA points. So if you win a race, for example, you get 100 points. If you get second, 80 points, third is 60 points, and so on, all the way down to 30th place um, gets one point. All of those points that you earn in each discipline are added up and you're given a ranking. So the guy who has the most points in GS, um, is the GS leader, the same thing with slalom, um, and so on. And those rankings are used then to determine the starts, um, the start list for future carnivals. So um, let's say I'm ranked seventh in giant slalom, then at the next carnival, um, I'll be in the first seed contains the top seven guys randomized, so I'll be in the top seed. Um, if I'm ranked 16th, I'll start 16th. And then at the thirty at the thirtieth bib number, um, EIS uh, EISA points are no longer used as the seeding points, and it switches to fist points. So in that case, let's say you haven't finished any carnivals, um, you don't have any EISA points, but you still have relatively good fist points. Um, you'll likely be starting somewhere in the mid thirties or maybe low forties, um, depending on what your fist points are. So at the end of the carnival season, um, there are NCAA championships, um, which is a race that combines both the EISA and the Rocky Mountain Division that I talked about earlier. Um, and essentially 15 guys, 15, 16 guys and 15, 16 girls qualify from the Eastern region and also from the Western region. Um, and so total, there's usually about 33 guys and 33 girls that qualify for NCAA championships. That race alternates between the East Coast and the West Coast every year. So this past year was in Steamboat Springs. Um, the year before that, it was at Cannon Mountain, New Hampshire. 
um, and it, it flip flops every year. Um, so at that race, the individual who wins the slalom or the GS is crowned as the national champion in that discipline. Um, and then just like carnivals, uh, teams get their team score. Um, and then at the very end of NCAAs, when they've done the slalom and the GS for the men and the women, um, the team with the most points, again, is, is crowned as the national champion team. Um, so that's sort of how it breaks down technically. Uh, more broadly speaking about college racing versus fist racing like we do in high school, um, it's really fun. It brings in a whole new aspect of team camaraderie that doesn't really exist um, in what's typically considered an individual sport. Um, it's really cool. Training sessions become way more about how everyone is skiing rather than just yourself. When you're in the gym, it means you're pushing each other a lot more. Um, and, and on the whole, there's just a lot more pride when your teammates do well. So for anyone who's considering racing in college, I can't recommend it enough. Um, and thanks for your time. I hope it was helpful. Bye.